Alcohol-based markers have always been a bit scary to me. Something about the intense colors, not being able to erase or paint over mistakes, but they also bring a sense of nostalgia, as I had a set of markers back when I got started with drawing as a teenager. So this drawing session feels a little bit like time traveling back into the past, challenging myself to dive into this medium I'd long forgot, trying out three different blending and mixed media techniques, and seeing if I can use markers for soft, ethereal coloring and blending. I'll be painting scenes from the 2020s movie Emma to practice, so I hope you grab your own markers or your art materials of choice and sketch along with me. I got sent this set of 48 markers from Ohuhu in their pastel color line titled Blossoming. I was curious to see what kind of colors would be included and if this smaller set works on its own without all their other markers. But mostly, with these being pastel shades, I felt less scared of what can be a very intense, a bit unforgiving medium. The markers come in a sturdy textile case and with two pre-made swatch papers. Part of the Honolulu marker line by Ohuhu, the markers I have here have the chisel and the soft brush tips, though there are Ohuhu markers with a smaller detail tip as well. I swatched them in this marker pad from the same brand. The paper is focused on blending over being bleed proof, so the paper is quite thin. To make sure the markers don't bleed onto the next page, there's this silicone cover sheet to put under the paper you're drawing on. The marker set also included one of these. While I had those small swatch papers that came with the marker set, I wanted to make color swatches on the actual paper I'd be working on. Paper can change the vibrancy and luminosity of colors, and the more accurate the swatches, the better. This also left me room for larger swatch sizes, and I could test out how the individual colors change when layering them. Some don't build up, like the very light primrose, no matter how often I went over the swatch, while other shades can create color gradients. Like I mentioned, this is a 48 color set, but there's an additional marker in there, the colorless blender, which I'll be testing in my drawing practice later. I was curious if the colors would look exactly like the shades of the marker caps. Short answer, no. While some of the shades are quite similar to the color of the caps, overall it's very much worth it to take the time and create swatches. As I found myself constantly referring to these when I was painting later. While some of the shades just have a subtle color difference to what their packaging shows, some, like tender pink and several of the gray tones, can be pretty surprising. The blossoming colors are all pastel toned, with a focus on a wide range of soft greens, muted orange and pink shades, and then some cooler blues, purples, and a variety of greys to tie it all together. The other pastel set by the same brand is called Sweetness, and that one is more focused on soft rosy pink tones and comes with more warm reddish grey shades as well. And while some of the shades look similar in the online color samples, there are actually no duplicate shades in these two sets, except for the colorless blender, of course. On the other hand, there are a couple duplicates in here for the skin tone set, as that is the set I'm most curious about to get. As an addition to these colors, I was keeping my eyes open for the colors there. Primrose, Barely Beige and Pear Color are the duplicates I could spot. Some shades that stood out to me during swatching as unique or just so beautiful that I was excited to paint with them soon. Barium Yellow, a unique looking medium yellow that balances between a more mustard shade and a warm sunflower shade. Grayish yellow for a very, very light skin tone. Grayish cherry, a muted cool lavender that layers beautifully even when just swatching. Rainflower purple looks like it would pair amazingly with grayish cherry as a cool counterpart. Sky blue brings some more saturation and darkness, while still staying in the pastel realm, as do bright blue, dark violet light and glass green. Celadon green scratches my itch for warm yellowish green tones that don't look muddy, and light holly green is a beautiful muted green that I was excited to use as a shadow color. I also like the look of all the grey tones in this set, though I wish there were a warm grey zero instead of only a cool grey at that lightness. 
A color that stood out negatively was tender pink, looking more like a neon pink highlighter and overall jumping out from all the pastel tones in this color palette. I also got sent this set of pens, and as I often reach for all kinds of liner pens when sketching, especially while traveling, I was really happy with the variety of this set, not only including a brush tip, but also a felt tip pen. I tested how quickly they dried, and the thicker pens do need a few minutes before you can safely go over them with the markers. As you can see, while the swatches show on the back of the paper, nothing bled into the next page of the sketchpad book thanks to that silicone cover. I did quickly fill in the official swatch sheets as well, which are on a thicker paper. And I couldn't find out if this is one of the Uhuru marker papers, which is a shame, as it felt pleasant to swatch on. Though it's probably too heavy and would absorb too much of the markers when actually painting. With all my swatches ready to go, I decided to dive into sketching movie scenes. I love using movie scenes or master studies when testing out materials. Since someone else already took care of the composition, the color palette, the lighting, so I get to focus on just the materials themselves, becoming familiar with them in that way. Making all those swatches had helped me with selecting a movie that I thought would fit the color palette, but also pushing this collection of markers to go beyond just flowers or nature, as the title of the set, Blossoming, implies. I picked Emma, with its colorful yet often light sets and costume designs. My free painting tests on this page are all trying different things. The first one here, which I started sketching in pencil but then went over with a thin liner pen, is all about coloring combined with pen outlines to provide contrast and detailing. I tried to always put the pen cap of the marker I'm using at the moment in view of the camera for this sketch. So you can tell which shade I'm painting with at any point. This actually feels incredibly nostalgic. This is how I used markers when I was much younger. Back then I had some Copic Chao markers, which, as they also have a brush tip, I'm comparing these Uhuhu markers to. And mostly used them for coloring manga art, always using either pen or waterproof ink lines. Sometimes colored pencil outlines, but never just the markers themselves. Now, this might date me a bit, but back then those markers were actually incredibly hard to find. It was a huge hassle to import them directly from some of the Japanese online shops that were around. I think over the last decade, or at this point decade and a half, markers seem to have come a long way with lots of different new options, affordable alternatives, and now the Ohuhu markers come with refill tanks as well, which makes getting a set of these feel less wasteful, as I know I won't have to toss the individual markers away after using up the ink in them. On that note, each Uhuhu Honolulu marker contains 3ml of alcohol-based ink, so the refill tanks would be good for 5 refills total of these markers in particular. Anyway, as this sent me on a trip down memory lane of using markers for my terrible art back then, I just really enjoyed building up these soft color layers. Since all the shades are pastel, they harmonize very well and felt less difficult to use than more intense saturated marker shades, which can look overpowering quickly. The pen outlines didn't smudge at all and helped with hinting at more detail than I actually painted on this small format, pushing the brush pen to the limit of how tiny it could draw at some points. If I get a set of skin tone shades at a later point, I'd be curious to try out the thinner tip option combined with this versatile soft brush, as I don't see myself using the chisel tip all that often. But that's a personal preference, as I tend to draw small art. If you work on larger formats, that chisel might be perfect for you. 
Having the swatches of all these similar yet subtly different shades ready at a glance turned out to be great for studying the colors of this movie scene. I could compare values and warmth of each color and felt like I always found a good fit in this set. The one exception would be dark, warm tones. While there are several cool grays and blue-gray tones that can be layered to look like dark shadows, the same doesn't work with the warm gray or neutral gray, which are much lighter, and I kept layering different rosy shades with gray to get a stand-in color for the dark brown dress and hair. The result looks much softer than the actual movie, but I like how the colors all flow together for this slightly faded look. I didn't use the colorless blender during that first drawing at all, so here's the sketch for that in particular. This scene has some blown out white highlights with lots of bright tones flowing into each other, so it would be perfect for a quick blending test. The blender can be used to wet the paper before going in with markers, creating smoother transitions overall, a bit like the wet on wet approach with watercolors. Or after the marker color is already on the paper, going over the color with the blender lightens the shade and can help with smudging two areas together, though that only works if you do it quickly. This small sketch helped me get a better feel for how the blender interacts with the regular markers and also made me fall even more in love with layering different grey tones on top of each other. For the largest and final movie study, I picked a zoomed-in look at Emma's face. I love painting portraits and it's my goal to practice them a lot this year, so this felt like a great fit. Here I'm not using outlines and used a combination of pencil and colored pencil in a very light grey tone and done with a colored pencil that doesn't leave much pigment dust to draw the sketch as lightly as possible. To start I used the blender a lot to both prepare the paper and later go back over some harsher edges and soften them. Alcohol markers always add, never subtract. If you go too dark or saturated you can't really undo that, even if the colorless blender can lighten the shade a tiny bit. 
so I kept the colors very toned down to start with. I could always add more saturation and darkness, but never take it back after all. I used warm grey 1 to carve out the shadows and greyish yellow for the parts of her face hit by light, adding some cooler undertones with pale fruit pink. Layering all these light shades creates really beautiful color transitions, and having the muted shades underneath makes it possible to create more vibrant colors by layering with light yellow shades or pinks on top. I also wanted to push the shadows a bit more for this scene and used all the cool greys, but especially the green-grey one, a lot, for contrast with the very light yellow face. Compared to the cool, nearly minty greens of the interior decor in that first scene study, the greens here are warm, deep and lush, so I used a different part of this blossoming color selection. As I kept layering, especially with the addition of the colorless blender, the paper started to get a bit wavy, like when painting on untaped paper with watercolors. I added some more details and started experimenting just a bit with colored pencils to create those darker warm brown shades the color selection was missing, but I decided to give it some time to unwarp the paper and see how it would look the next morning. And the good news, the paper flattened back out. Not completely, there's some slight bending noticeable, but in any case, the paper was back to normal and I could layer on it again without having to push it down flat. Overall, I'm surprised with how intuitive these feel for blending and layering and that I could use them without any pen outlines easily. I think if you're new to markers, a soft pastel colored set like this one is actually a great fit, with all the shades blending together harmoniously and the colors easy to control. Though if you're more into vibrant, intense scenes, these won't give you a wide range of contrast or saturation in which case the regular marker sets would be a better fit. There are some really beautiful shades in this set, and I love the entire range of greens and purples especially. Now about the markers themselves. I can only compare them to the Copic Chao markers I used a long time ago, and to a variety of smaller brands like the Shinhan Touch markers that I used only a few times. I'm not a marker expert, so I'm mostly evaluating these on how easy they are to use for someone who's new to them. The brush tip feels amazing, it holds a nice tension while still being very soft and I was able to color detailed areas with it. The chisel tip, which I used way less but got a feel for during swatching, needs a stable hand to get a completely even application. But I liked it for quick abstract shapes in the background rather than filling in large areas. The colorless blender helped me with the color gradients on Emma's face, where I wanted the shading to look especially smooth, but then I mostly just layered and mixed the regular markers without the blender and felt like that worked perfectly fine, especially on this thin marker paper. So the blender is nice to have, but you don't need it to blend every single time, which made the painting process feel fluid and quick. Paper is very thin, doesn't drink up too much marker ink, but I wouldn't use it without the protective silicone sheet that comes with it. It can also buckle if you layer too many markers, and especially the blender, too quickly, but flattens back out if you let those layers dry. Overall, I'm really happy with these, how simple they are to use and how beautiful these colors look together, despite wishing some of those orange or pinkish hues would have been replaced with a darker brown or grey. While I think the sketch could have been left alone as a marker-only painting, I did want to test this mixed-media approach. I kept it simple, two colored pencils mostly for some final contrast. One to add a muted warm shadow grey to the sketch, the other for a hint of vibrancy. Like I'd observed during swatching, brown shades or warm greys are the palette weakness of this set, especially compared to the variety of cool greys, blue grey and green grey included, on the other side of that spectrum. I kept the colored pencil shading very minimal, since I still want the main focus of this session to be on the markers themselves. 
So while I love this mixed media combination with the colored pencils feeling smooth on top of the marker layers, I stopped myself from endlessly layering more and more. But I can't wait to give that approach a full, dedicated drawing session. I hope this partially ASMR painting process was relaxing to watch and that my first attempts with alcohol-based markers in over a decade inspired you to try out something similar. Thank you so much for watching, I hope this was helpful if you're looking into markers for yourself and I hope to see you in my future art videos.